All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be taking a look at um, Work Together 14-3, and it is literally four points. It's not going to be very long at all, okay? So that's why we're going to be doing three of them to together, um, just because they are all as short as this one. What we have to take a look at is we are going to be doing the rest of our adjustments together. You guys know you have stuff turned on, right? So, what you need? Uh, I'm in the middle of teaching right now. Which one do you need? You look that up and let me know, and then I'll get it for you. Okay. So, we take a look at our adjustments. We have adjusted supplies and we have adjusted insurance because things get used up. Now. With our business that we're in now, we're in a merchandising business, which means I am not just going out and babysitting or cutting someone's hair. I am selling people things. Am I making this? No, I'm selling it. So because I have to buy this item, and let's say this item costs $5, am I going to sell it to you for $5? I won't be in business for very long. Right? I can't sell it for what the cost is because why? I won't make any money. I won't be able to go through and pay for my rent, pay for my lights, pay for my water, pay for my employees, my cash register, any of those types of items. So anytime we buy merchandise, it's going to go into the account. Write it down and I'll take care of it. Okay? So we'll write down, we will go through and Anytime we buy throughout the year, it goes into the account purchases. Would you agree? Because my, my rule for you has been anytime that you say, bought merchandise on account, paid cash for merchandise, any of those types of items, we're going to affect the account of purchases. Now, purchases is a temporary account, meaning at the end of the fiscal year, that account has to get to zero. So when I look at the account purchases at the end of the fiscal year, Whatever the value is, that is all of the merchandise that I have bought this fiscal period. What I have to do then is I have to transfer that amount from purchases and then get it into merchandise inventory. Merchandise inventory is my permanent asset account that will never get closed, but we have to go through and adjust for what we have. Now this is where your mind's going to be blown a little bit. When I look at my value, a merchandise inventory right here, $248,752.25, that is the value of inventory that this business had on the last day of the fiscal period. Because we don't use that account at all anytime we're journalizing. So at the end of the last fiscal period, that's how much merchandise we had. Then we have to go through and we do inventory just like we did for our supplies because I bought seven cases of paper. I don't have seven cases of paper left. And then they're going to give us our new value of merchandise. So they're saying the December 33rd balance is determined to be $234,904.20. Now, here's where it gets a little crazy because your value of merchandise inventory can either go up or it can go down, unlike supplies, because supplies is always going to go down. Prepaid insurance is always going to go down. But merchandise inventory can go either way. Reason being is, let's say that I went through and bought a whole bunch of items this year, but I didn't sell them, so I'm going to have more products at the end of this year than I did last year. A business doesn't want to have merchandise inventory to zero, because what happens if we have merchandise inventory of zero? We have nothing to sell. So the beginning of the next fiscal period, customers walk in, there's nothing there. So you always have to have merchandise from one fiscal period to the next. That's going to make sense. At the end of the fiscal year, the Thunder Zone isn't out of completely all of their clothes. We go through and look to see what we have, and then we can go through and adjust for what we sold then for this year. 
we know when we do adjustments that we have to affect two accounts. We know right now one of them is going to be merchandise inventory. The other thing that Applia makes very aware of on this assignment is what is the other account? Nope. Income summary. You are one line off. So income summary is a, is a temporary account also. We are using the account income summary just to go through and use to keep track of what is happening with our net income. We used income summary at the end of the last year's the last uh, cycle fiscal period just to keep track of what our net income is. So when we take a look at this number two three four nine oh four twenty, does that go here? What goes in this adjustment column? How much we have used, or in this case, how much have we have gained? Now, because I said that number can be bigger. So is it bigger or smaller? Smaller. So I'm going to take out my handy-dandy little calculator. I'm going to subtract the difference between 248, 752, 25, and 234, 20. And I got... 13,848.05? Anyone agree or disagree? Agree? You guys are not on your beef stick game. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to put this as an adjustment for merchandise inventory as a credit. So I'm going to do 13,848.05. Now, again, we can't have a debit without, or we can't have a credit without a debit, so we're going to then go to income summary and debit it. Okay, that's the work together. Do the on your own. I know. Good luck with that. It's great because it just annoys everyone. <laughs> if everyone would just stay in class, then we wouldn't have to worry about it. So 14.4, we're doing another adjustment. This one we're doing is for a different concept. So we know that we have customers that come and buy on an account. That means they come, get their item, they walk out, but they don't pay us right away. We bill them and they pay us at a later date. Okay, so we sold merchandise on an account to Dylan. We trust Dylan. He's a good guy, right? So we bill Dylan, and then Dylan's like, oh, I'm not going to pay Mrs. Grass. So I'll be like, what? I bill him again. What? And eventually something happens where we just decide that Dylan is not going to pay. And all businesses deal with this, and that is part of dealing with business. We realize that not everything is going to work out perfect. Unlike in our first unit, where everything just came out and we had no problems, now we're dealing with more real realities of what's happening. So we have an account called accounts receivable. Asset has a debit normal balance. We also have an account called allowance for uncollectible accounts. And on our worksheet, you will find that that account is immediately below accounts receivable. What is its balance on the trial balance column, though? Debit or credit? Yes. So what does that mean? Say it again. Not necessarily. So we have accounts receivable has a debit balance, and allowance for uncollectible accounts has a credit balance. What does that mean? I heard people talk about that word yesterday. It's a certain type of account. Contra account. Meaning it's only there to keep track of what takes away from it. And it's important for a business to know every year what, how many customers have not paid us. Do we want that to be a big number? No, we want that to be as, as small as number possible, right? We know we can't say, well, because people aren't going to pay us, we're not going to have anyone buy an account because that's not really how the business world works. There's no way the Thunder Zone would be able to have any products if we had to pay them immediately when they dropped it off. 
because it takes time. We get the items, we look at the bill, we have to request payment, and then we send it in. Same thing, we get cookies dropped off for making the Thunder Zone 2. When they drop off the cookies, they don't stand there and wait for that check immediately. That is how business takes care of. So we have to account for that. So typically what a business does is they go through and they estimate what percent of sales on an account will not be paid. And again, we want that number to be small. And for our business here, for Coastal Aqu Aquatic, Aquatic, Aquatics, wow, I can't talk today. They're saying that they're doing 0.5% of total sales in an account. Now, here's my question. They're not saying total sales because we can have customers that will come in, buy items, and, and give us cash for it. So I can't look at the value of sales and say it's going to be 0.5% of sales. It's going to be 0.5% of sales in an account. And you are going to have to look that number up differently that really would be from your sales journal the total of accounts receivable for the whole entire year. That's where you would get that number. But I will tell you in class, they won't ask you to calculate that number. It will always be given to you. So for our adjustment here, they say that Coastal Aquatics had uh, a sales on an account of $424,000. And they're saying... 0.5% of that is going to be uncollectible. So we're going to take our handy-dandy little calculator, and you're going to multiply. Can you handle that math? So 424 times 0 0.005, because it's 0.5%. Five, uh, so how much is that? Two thousand one hundred and twenty. Four hundred twenty-four thousand. Okay, so we got two thousand one hundred and twenty dollars, right? So we are saying of all of our sales, that is going to be what is not going to be able to collect. So we're going to go through and credit for allowance for uncollectible accounts two thousand one hundred and twenty dollars. So this year, that's what we say will not be able to collect. Now. We also have to have a debit. And you know this is going to be a debit because look at the account. It says uncollectible account expense. We always have to, during the fiscal period, match our revenue and our expenses. Okay, That is an accounting concept of matching expenses for the fiscal period. I can't wait. So, you know, Dylan, he bought from me, but I'm not going to declare that he can't pay probably for another year. Because it's not like the day after he doesn't pay, I said, oh, he won't pay and I don't do anything. There are things that businesses do to try to collect funds. So because Dylan bought the item from me this fiscal period, I have to put in the expense for this fiscal period of what I would anticipate not being able to collect on. So allowance for uncollectible accounts would be debited for that amount. Go ahead and try it on your own. It's really that hard. All right, our last adjustment. So far, you've learned about adjusting supplies, prepaid insurance, which was a review from what we did previously in the school year. We adjusted for merchandise inventory, the total value of products we have, and then we just adjusted for people that don't pay because they're naughty. Now, the last adjustment we're going to deal with is depreciation. Anyone in here own a vehicle? What happens every time you drive it? goes down in value, right? The more you use it, the less it's worth. Do we know anything that goes up in value? A house typically would go up in value unless it's not maintained, right? So when something goes up in value, that's called appreciation versus depreciation. So this computer right here that Garrett's sitting at, I am looking to sell it for $2,000. You want to buy it? Gonna buy it? Buy it? Why won't you buy it for two thousand dollars? It's used. Is that what it's worth today? 
Now, it did not really cost $2,000 when I bought it. That's just a number I'm picking. But let's say it did cost $2,000 the day that it was purchased. Again, but it didn't. Because it's been used, there are other models out there that are newer, faster, better. I can't get the original value back from that product. So every year, a business has to go through and look at their equipment, okay, and they have to determine how much of it has gone down. Now, the government will go through and help you to determine depreciation because that's one of the things that businesses will do to lower their taxes. Because when an item depreciates, that's an expense. And an expense would do what to your net income? Make it go down. The less money your business makes, the less taxes you have to pay. Would you agree? But I can't go through and say, well, I bought this computer this year for $2,000. It depreciated, and now it's worth nothing. That's not really the true case. So the government will go through, and they will take a look at what you paid for it and then what its typical lifespan would be. So think about your backpack. Let's say you bought your backpack brand new, and it cost $40. Okay, right there, that one right there. The day after you bought it, could you sell it and get close to $40? Yes. yes, right? Now, let's say you got that backpack in seventh grade. Can you now sell it for $40? What happens the longer you use it, the more it breaks down. And the government will go through and tell you that for example, a computer could have a useful life of five years. After that, really no one would buy it used. You'd want to go out and buy something new. Now, would a vehicle have a longer or a shorter useful life? A little bit longer, right? How about a printer? Kind of, uh, maybe right about the same amount because technology supplies those type of things that go associated with it. So when you have to determine de depreciation, they will always tell you the amount of years that it can be used, and that's just uh, given to us by the government saying this is what a standard is because otherwise some businesses will choose different ones. And they'll say at the end of its useful life, this is how much most people could get for it. Because like, even if I can't get someone to buy this computer, could I take the parts apart and recycle it and get some money for it? Yeah. So we need to be aware of that. So when I look at uh, instruction number one, it says, calculate the depreciation expense for a computer printer costing $1,600 with an estimated salvage value of $100 and a useful life of five years. So what we have to do is we, we get to take the depreciation for this printer and divide it up over five years. How much is it totally going to depreciate? Is it going to depreciate the entire value of $1,600? How much is it going to depreciate? Say it again. No, not 100. 1,500. Okay. How did I get that? So that's why I said this one's a little bit harder. You take the value that you bought it. So we bought it at 1,600. We subtract from it our salvage value of... 100. So that means the total amount of depreciation we can get for that printer is 1,500. Then what we do is we say it's going to depreciate the same amount every year, so I would take 1,500 and divide by its useful life, which is 5. So that's what we're going to do down here on the bottom. If they kind of have it set, up, set, us, set us up to calculate it. So the original cost is 1,600. Salvage value, 100. So our total depreciation, 1,500. We divide that by useful life. So how much does it depreciate a year? Yeah. So every year that this business owns this printer for five years, we know that the printer is going to depreciate $300. Now here's the thing. You have to do that for every 
asset that you own. Now think about that. How many computers are in this room? 27. 28 including mine. I have three printers in, or three computers in that room. I have a printer there and a printer here. That's just my room. They have to go through and calculate depreciation on this computer, on this computer, on this computer, just for this room. Now think about all the Chromebooks. Think about the LMC. Think about all the teachers. Now that's just this building. You have to do that for every building. Now here's another thing that you don't think about depreciating, but this chair. We bought it originally, right? And then you actually have to depreciate chairs. That filing cabinet, this projector, tables. The door is going to be part of the building. Okay? The Thunder Zone just brought a freezer. Is that fr Do I expect that freezer to work for the next 30 years? Hopefully, but pop potentially not, right? So every business has to go through, and we're not going to get into that in accounting one, but in accounting two, they go through and they do plant asset records, and somebody has to go through and say, okay, for this item, this is what's going to depreciate this year and this year. So it's not too bad in here because all of these computers were bought on the same date, and they're going to have the same depreciation. So I can calculate it for one, it would be the same and multiplied across. But now they're getting new Chromebooks. For example, Mrs. Caldy's Chromebooks have been in there longer than, for example, Mr. Kilsdunk. So you have different depreciations for each one. So a business has to keep track of that. So there is a whole world of depreciation that accounting and finance need to get taken care of. So this is called straight line depreciation, meaning every year it depreciates the same amount. Now your vehicle does not depreciate the same amount all year. Or for every year, why not? Yes. So, for example, my husband drives to Green Bay and back every day for work. He uses his car more than I do because I drive two miles to work and back every day. So the more you use your vehicle, the faster it depreciates. So not every type of item can be depreciated this way because... If you go to buy a new vehicle, one of the things that everyone looks at is Kelly Blue Book, right? And in Kelly Blue Book, one of the questions they ask is how many miles it's on it. The higher the miles, the cheaper the value because the more it's depreciated. So we have to go through for number two, and we have to calculate what is the book value. The book value is the original amount of the item subtract, subtracting from the years of depreciation that we have had. So we're going to calculate the book value of our printer. Right here it says our original cost, and our original cost is 1600 How much did it depreciate in year one? It's not a trick question. $300, yes. That's why I said it's not a trick question. It really depreciated 300 How much did it depreciate in year two? 300 right? So, what is the total depreciation this printer has had? 600. So, what is the book value? 1000, right? Cuz it's going to be the original value, original cost, subtract your depreciation. Now, this is where it gets even a little bit more confusing. Let's say the end of my fiscal period is December. What if I bought the printer in December? Would it really depreciate $300? No. What I would have to do, and we're not going to do it right now, but I want you to think about this, is I would actually have to calculate a partial year's depreciation. So I would know that the, this year... It, the first year would depreciate $300. So if I needed to know what a partial year is, I'd say, how many months did I own it? If I owned it one month, that would be one twelfth, right? So I would take one twelfth of 300, and that would be how much it would depreciate in year one. What you need to remember always for calculating depreciation is you can never depreciate it below its salvage value. And the salvage value for this printer 
is 100. So the minute we get to 100, we stop. We don't go below that because if all else fails, I can take it for scrap and I should be able to get $100 back for it. Some items really may have an estimated salvage value of $5 or $10, but typically there will always be some value that you can have at the end. So this is calculating our annual depreciation for a full year. This is calculating our book value after owning it a couple years and depreciating it. So again, if I wanted to sell this printer, I legitimately could put it for sale on Craigslist or Weber for $1,000, and that would be appropriate. Now, could I sell it for more? I could try, and I might get someone to pay for it. Could I sell it for less? So when you do that, you can either have a loss or a gain on a sale of plan asset, and that happens a lot. Have you ever heard of somebody, they say, oh, yeah, I bought this car really cheap, I fixed it up, and then I sold it for more than what I paid for? I've heard people that have done that, or snowmobiles or other items. People buy, fix, and maybe they don't even have to fix. They just go through and change it up. Right, Kendall? Yeah. Okay. Our last instruction says, on December 31st, Coastal Aquatics determined the total depreciation expense for office equipment is 6120 Now, basically what they did for every piece of equipment, they went through and calculated how much it depreciated this year, and they added it all up. And they said, for office equipment, the depreciation for this year is 6120 This is where it, you, people go, but that's not what we've done before. So 6120 is that how much we used up this year or what's left over? What we use. <laughs> okay, so 6120 is how much we've used of that asset this year. And we remember that our column here for adjustments deals with how much we've used. So I'm actually going to take that 6120 and I'm going to put it as a credit for office equipment. You will notice that we have this account called Accumulated Depreciation Office Equipment. Now, it's right below the account Office Equipment. Office Equipment is debited. Accumulated Depreciation is credited. What type of account is Accumulated Depreciation? We talked about it already today. Contra. We have it just to keep track of what takes away from its original asset. So I would know before, at the start of the fiscal year, I had total depreciation of my assets of $12,485. Now, I can't have a credit without a debit, so you're going to find that you have depreciation expense for office equipment on the bottom, and you'll put $6,120. We'll do the same thing for store equipment. I'm going to credit... Uh, accumulated depreciation, store equipment, uh, 5060 and then I'm going to de uh, debit depreciation expense for store equipment, 5060 so I told you that one, this one was twice as long as the other ones. Go ahead, check that answer. Hopefully you're rock stars and you got it all perfect. And then try that on your own. <laughs>